Loneliness is much more common in times where there are expectations that people should be doing things. People call it fear of missing out, but sometimes it gets more serious and people feel very lonely and isolated. So in this video, we're going to explore what that might mean and what you can do about it. So hopefully during this holiday season, you won't feel so lonely. Hi, my name is Marios. I'm a psychological well-being practitioner at the private therapy clinic in Harley Street, London. If you'd like to see more content like this, please support the channel and subscribe to see more videos. And my own social media links are also included in the description box below. The first thing to recognize is that loneliness, as with all emotions, is just a feeling. It's not a fact about you. It doesn't read on you as a person or your life. It is just something that is happening there in the moment and something that you can become aware of but not necessarily identify with too much. Recognizing that an emotion is having an impact on you is really important. So just by acknowledging it, you've already made a good first step. So what's next? You'll probably wanna go a bit deeper into why you feel lonely. Is it that you wanna see more people? Is it that there are people in your life that you don't speak to enough and now the holiday season is exacerbating how that distance is there and actually you'd like to rekindle friendships, relationships, connections with your family, all of that. Your loneliness is there to potentially tell you something. And the more aware you are around what triggers you and what kind of makes you feel a bit better when it comes to loneliness, the better. Because then you can start formulating a plan so that you can address it. And you know that soon enough, you'll be able to be connected with the types of people or things that are important to you in your own life. That brings us to the second point, which is loneliness can make you look at yourself a lot when actually one of the best treatments for loneliness is to start focusing on what is outside of yourself. So we'll look at that in two ways. One is what you have in your life that you can be grateful for, and two, what opportunities you have to be of service to other people. Because when you're lonely, it can feel like you need to bring things into yourself, you need to fill some sort of void, but actually, the connection that you share with other people is what's going to most likely solve that problem. And so if you can go out and say, actually, I would like to thank this person for doing this for me, or I would like to thank that person for being in my life, or I'd like to revisit a memory with this person and say, by the way, I remember this time and it was really special to me, so thank you for making that happen. All those things are bringing awareness around things that you're grateful for, things that are good about your life and your history, and they're things that can inspire you to take action in future so that you won't be as lonely in the future. So this comes under the general umbrella of gratitude, and gratitude is wonderful. It, it, it's been widely accepted as a good way to increase well-being overall. But in this particular instance, it's really good to focus on people and how they make you feel or have made you feel accepted, seen, and vice versa. Remember, this is happening in two ways. So you should think of yourself as both an agent, someone who's there, can actively do things, and also someone who is gracefully receiving these things from other people. And make sure that you're very consciously communicating the fact that I see this, I acknowledge you, thank you for doing this for me. And hopefully you will see some of that in return. There's no need to expect anything in return. Um, because expectations can kind of set you up for disappointment. So it's always better to give self selflessly um, and just see what that does. Of course, hearing good things from other people is going to make those people that you're speaking to feel better. And that's just an automatic step in the right direction. So one thing you might do when you're having a lonely thought is say, yes and, meaning you have this feeling of loneliness, you acknowledge it, you say, yes, I accept the feeling because that's important. Resistance can cause emotions to be worse or at least your reaction to them to be worse. So saying yes and, and then following up with something that is productive, moving forwards in a way that's gonna make you feel better is one good way to do it. So for example, I feel I don't have enough friends. I say, oh, I don't have enough friends or I don't have enough close friends. And I say, yes and, but I've got a lot of interests that other people are interested in. For example, I like certain kinds of video games or I have hobbies that I do at home that other people outside in the world also have. And actually I could use that to connect with people in this new year or at least after this holiday. So now I feel better because even though I acknowledge that my current state is not ideal or at least the feeling I'm having is not ideal, I know that there are features of my life that are gonna help me move forward and 
move me into a, a position that is beneficial for me and others. Another thing to notice is how social media is impacting you. Sometimes it can be a source of good connection. It's a good way to connect with people who are far away from you based on something that you have in common, such as an interest, such as uh, an idol that you have in common. But people heavily curate their presence online. So you should be very wary of uh, becoming jealous or just feeling worse about yourself with regards to social media. So if you can distance yourself from those kinds of interactions, if you find that on Facebook, for example, or any other platform, you tend to see people highlighting parts of their lives that from the outside seems very glistening and wonderful, but make you feel bad. The first thing is to acknowledge that that is not a fair representation of those people's lives entirely, and they shouldn't make you feel bad. Well, you can accept that they make you feel bad, but they shouldn't have that impact on you because they're not quite as they seem. So if you wanna stay on social media and that's an important avenue for you to connect with other people, then you can do that, but make sure you're being cautious and kind to yourself when you notice that they may be having a negative effect on you. The next is to start planning. The holidays are often a time of change. So they mark some sort of change in the year, uh, possibly in a religious sense, but in the new year, of course, that's just the calendar that everyone follows. And that's an opportunity for you to start planning for the year ahead. So start envisioning. What do you actually want your life to be like in the future? Plan further ahead. You don't need to go just one year. What is this loneliness telling you about yourself that might help you starting to plan your future? Do you want to involve yourselves in more groups where people talk about things that are interesting to you or do things that are interesting to you? It could be anything. It could be sports, it could be sewing, it could be public speaking, it could be anything that you dream about doing or you look up to other people for doing. People are out there who could help you achieve that, uh, practice it, become the person that you want to be. So start planning. What do you want to do next month? Sign up for that newsletter, sign up for that class that starts up in the new year. Join up for that meeting group uh, in your city or town so that you can start connecting with people. Even if you can't action anything right now, you can start planning and looking forward to things is really exciting. Um, it's actually sometimes the most exciting part. For example, when people plan holidays, it's been shown that the most pleasure is planning the holiday and the anticipation of the holiday. So sometimes it's not even the holiday itself. It's like, oh, I can't wait for that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna wrap everything up at work and get everything in order and then go on my holiday and really deserve it. That feeling can actually be very pleasurable and might be very useful to you now in this time where you are feeling lonely during the holidays. The next point is finding meaning. Meaning can come from many sources and yes, relationships are a big part of that. So if that's something that's important to you, make sure that's part of your plan. But there are many other things that are outside of the realm of interpersonal relationships that might be meaningful to you. So one thing that most people will identify with is having a pet even though you can't have a human interaction with them, they have a lot of features that are similar to pets. So you don't necessarily need a pet of your own. If you like being around animals, you can find situations where you are closer to animals. But there's a lot more outside of even things that are animated or living. So for example, people get a lot of meaning from a religion or philosophical beliefs. Now, even though you may not have a particular relationship with a religious belief, or you've had negative ones in the past, learning about you know, uh, religions or those concepts or philosophies around life, ways of living, um, why we're here, can be intrinsically valuable. And so you could do that via literature. It doesn't have to be, uh, religion might seem quite heavy to a lot of people. So you might wanna go back to literature, books, even films that tell stories about ideas that kind of transcend the now right? It's stuff that's not just topical. It's not just things that are happening around you today. It's stuff that humans have thought about for much longer than right now. So try and revisit that. Did you used to read a lot of fiction when you were younger or some, you know, you generally don't read as much now? Can you revisit that? What kind of topics were you drawn to? And let that give you a few more hints around what is meaningful to you. Maybe you'll want to get a bit more connected with your own culture and that will start making you feel rooted in something that has a deeper history and maybe get you excited to start joining groups or connecting with people who have uh, similar backgrounds or interests um, or even just having that kind of nurturing of your own understanding of who you are and where you come from. So just to summarize, it's always okay to feel these feelings. So accepting them, being cognizant, aware of them is very important and it's the first step. All feelings are acceptable 
meaning they're capable of being accepted. You can accept them. They don't need to be ideal. They don't need to be pervasive, be there around you all the time, but acknowledging them and saying, this is where I am, this is what I'm feeling, is the best type of self-awareness to start to promote at times of difficulty like this. And once you're in that state, you can say, right, and now I'm going to take action, or now I'm going to start discovering parts of myself that are important, and I'm gonna plan the year ahead, or even the next week, tomorrow, anything, around that new self-awareness and new willingness to move yourself towards a more connected feeling in the future. And if it ever feels like it's too much, make sure you ring any relevant hotlines if you're having any suicidal thoughts or feeling particularly down. There are charities out there specifically set up to help you, so you should always reach out. We will leave some links in the description box below. And if you want a more long-term solution, you may want to seek private therapy. And of course, you can do that at the private therapy clinic if that's of interest. We have a lot of therapists with broad sets of expertise um, that can be of great help. Um, and that's always a positive move forward. Don't forget to check the links in the description below, and we'll hope to see you soon.